attention. New. Good morning, Wildcats. Welcome to Sports Corner. I'm your host, Eric Hightower, here with my co-host, CJ Wilson. It's the morning of November 18th, and now we have some interesting sports to bring forth from this past weekend. We'll start with game one, uh, the Chiefs versus the Broncos last night. The Chiefs were undefeated coming into this game. Now to know. Denver had only lost one game. It was a big, big matchup. How do yeah, you feel about yeah, that? Yeah, so far, it was, it was the matchup of the year, but I feel like, you know, the Broncos played play the, play the better game. You have Peyton Manning on, on a high ankle sprain, threw for over 300 yards. It was probably the most accurate he has been all season, which he had to against the tight secondary that the Kansas City Chiefs had, one of the best secondaries in the NFL, the best defense on paper. But I feel like the, um, so far the Broncos are in a position to be one of the best teams in the league. And uh, I was kind of surprised at the Chiefs because they, they're, they're not a no, but their schedule was so far is kind of on, on the weak side, right. and they really showed up to play against, against a, a good Broncos team. And that's the thing, that a lot of people were saying that the Chiefs, once they reach this Broncos game, then they see it, what they really made of. Exactly. But I believe they're going to be a contender in the, in the AFC. I just think last night we should have saw, I, I, I would have liked to see Dexter McCluster get a little bit more involved. Yeah, he, exactly. But I mean, that, that's kudos to the, uh, to the Denver Broncos defense. They played a phenomenal game, yeah. held Jamal Charles in check, Dexter McCluster, Dwayne Bow, Alex Smith had a lot of pressure under him. He was throwing under, under a lot of duress. So kudos to, the, to, a, to a Denver Broncos defense that, that has been underperforming for the latter part of the season. Yeah, and the Broncos, like you said, they, they have been underperforming, but I just think being that the Chiefs had so much to lose and the Broncos would have been would have had a second loss on their record. Yeah, and that was a that was a, a, a big game because those two are in the same division. Exactly. So I mean one of the it's, it's gonna be crazy for one of these two teams will be a wild card. Win, exactly. Yeah, the other's gonna win the division, the other's gonna be a wild card, which could be a, a fourteen and two team in a wild card or, or whatever you have. One of those guys is gonna be in the wild card, which is crazy. That shows how great or how good their, those two teams are in that division. Mm -hmm. In their division. What about the Seahawks? The Seahawks are. Um, yeah, you had. I mean, as far as like the, I believe I'm, I'm not sure if the Broncos are the best team in in the NBA. I'm sorry, the NBA, the NFL. But you have the Seattle Seahawks, who are who are the great ten to one. The uh, New Orleans Saints, who beat a pretty good San Francisco team last night. Yeah, They're yeah. eight and two. Then you have the Broncos and Chiefs, both sitting the top of the, uh, the AFC uh, AFC West at nine and one. And then you have. Uh, unsung, the, the, I mean, the usual New England Patriots, who are kind of under the radar this year, but they're sitting at seven and two. But they have a big game tonight with the up, this, this uh, upcoming Monday. Well, the, tonight, I'm so sorry, against the uh, Carolina Panthers and Cam Newton, who are also rolling at a six and three record. Exactly. So that game tonight is going to tell a lot about who's going to shape up in, in, the, in the playoff picture as far as the better teams in the, in the in NFL. One thing I've learned about just just being a fan of football over the past year is the New England Patriots. Whenever their record's declining or they've lost a few games during the season, you, you still can't count them out of that of that playoff race just because Tom Brady he's such a Elite such a great quarterback, quarterback, quarterback and he such makes a good, so many people better. Such a good team leader that like CJ says, he brings he brings that aspect to the entire team and everybody can kind of feed off of his energy. So just don't sleep on the Patriots. They've taken two losses but Further in the playoffs and whatnot. You yeah, but also they, the then they, they get Gronkowski back, which is going to be huge. Exactly. I mean, you get with uh, Peyton Man, I'm Peyton Man, Tom Brady getting Gronk back. That's going to be big, and pay also, big dividends. Also, talk of um, Vince Wilford possibly being able to come back. So that'll be huge. You got a, a defensive presence in the defensive line like Vince Wilford could clog those running lanes and start to run, run the ball. The pass or pass on the way. And I'm then, willing to say if you would have had Gronkowski. On the offensive presence, and then with Wilford on the defensive presence, and also if Hernandez would have never got in trouble, these guys could have been on top of the AFC. Yeah, the Patriots probably could be nine and zero right now. Yeah, and then, and then the, the piggyback on the Seattle Seahawks. I mean, they're ten and one, sitting on top of the NFC. If those guys get clinched home field advantage throughout the playoffs, it's a wrap. You might as well mark them in for the Super Bowl because they're not losing at home with the, with the uh, 12th yeah. man intact. The loudest stadium in the NFL, the hardest stadium to play in, in the NFL with, between them and the Superdome, but it's going to be. A ruckus crowd at, at uh, the 12th man. So I believe that the Seattle Seahawks, if they can win, if they can um, obtain a number one seed in the NFC, they're, 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 they just wrote their ticket to the Super Bowl without a doubt. Yeah, and I just think with it being so many, so weeks, so far into the season, I'm sorry, 
I just think it's interesting to see all these teams still only at one loss. Exactly. I mean, like I said, we were in the latter part of the season. There's exactly. so many great teams left with. It's, it's, it's still a lot to be told during the season. And, I mean, that's that's pretty common with college football is a lot of teams having winning records and having one losses or two losses. But well, with the competition in the NFL, professional kind of, level of exactly. the NFL, it's, it's almost impossible to have five-plus teams with two only only two losses on the season. Exactly. But um, we can take the talk and the attention over to the uh, college football. BCS standings just released this week. Once again. We still have Alabama as number one. That probably will not change. Probably uh, won't. FSU at a number two. Arguably could be a possible number one. Without a doubt. That probably won't change either. Um, Ohio State at number three. We got Baylor at number four. And Oregon at number five. Yeah, Oregon jumped back at the number five spot with uh, Stanford taking a loss to the USC Trojans. Not, and I said like early in the week, just talking to myself that I believe that USC can beat the Stanford team. Ed Orgeron has re has really changed 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 the culture around the USC. And those guys are playing regular USC ball. But but to piggyback on the number one team, Alabama, they have some tough tests coming up. I mean, you have the number six ranked at Auburn in the Iron Bowl. I mean, this is one of the biggest rivalries in college football, the Iron Bowl. So I mean, you, both of these guys are in the top ten and is at Auburn. So best believe that's going to be a Rutgers environment, a hard environment for. The Alabama Crimson Tide to come into and get a win, and then if they if they do so happen to beat Auburn and go on to the SEC championship, they have to play a pretty good Missouri team that's ranked number eight in the country. So, if the and and judging from seeing Alabama Saturday night versus Mississippi State, I mean State, a, tw a this one twenty to seven. I mean that's a that. That's a closer margin of a game than I would expect. Yeah, to see and you, you have Florida State putting up 50 points a half exactly. on people. So, I mean. So, this arises the question should Alabama be number one or should FSU be number one? Without, without a doubt, I believe FSU, so far, with, it, with it, this point in the season, the FSU has had the, the, uh, the bigger showing. Exactly. These guys beat two top 10 teams, beat them handily at that, beat, beat a good, um, beat a good uh, Miami team uh, 45, 45 to 14 in this. Uh, demolished Clemson 51, 51, uh, 51 to 7 in Death Valley. So, I mean. And the critics keep saying of uh, Florida State that their schedule didn't have enough strength to it and they're not playing any teams. But regardless, the college football is a certain level of play, a certain skill I mean, you have to they're get. The, they're the only team in the country to play two ranked, two top 10 teams exactly. and dominate them. So, I mean, the, the, critics are, the critics are crazy. If you want to talk about a weak schedule, Alabama has the weak schedule exactly. so far up to this point in the season. They're in the SEC, no doubt about it, but they avoid a lot of the big dogs in the SEC. They didn't play Georgia. They don't play South Carolina. They don't play Florida. I mean, those guys are really, they're, they're, they're dodging the juggernauts. And, and, and the, the only game where they did have a, a bit of a competitive level was versus the Mississippi State. And it was only, what was the score, 20 to, 20 to, 7. 20 to 7. Yeah, but I mean, if... That I mean, was a but big if, challenge. Right, but if Alabama beat these top two ten, ten teams coming up in this upcoming weeks, I mean, without a doubt, they'll be the number one team right. in the nation. They should be. I mean, the number six Auburn and the number eight Missouri in the SEC championship. But all, I mean, w I mean, the the proof is in the pudding. You got number one Florida, number two Florida State, number one Alabama. Those two are going to the national championship, barring any crazy yeah. crazy upsets. But you have number three Ohio State, who's just who's just waiting. I mean, you have Urban Meyer coming to Ohio State. He hasn't lost the game yet. Yeah. So th those guys are just waiting in the wings. But at the same time, their schedule is pretty weak. They have a, they have a Michigan Wolverine team, which is probably not the game that they expected to be as far as the rankings. But then you have Baylor. They have, they're making their case that, hey, I want to be in the National Championship uh, contention also. They have number 10 Oklahoma State coming. If they can either win at Oklahoma State, the number 10, 10 ranked team in the country, then hey, they could throw their uh, bid in for the national championship, but without a doubt, Alabama and Florida State are the class of college football, and they will be playing the national championship. I have to agree with that, CJ. I think Florida State and Alabama definitely will have a, a good BCS Bowl run game. And yeah, and just a like, overview of Florida State's upcoming schedule, I mean, they have Idaho, which is terrible. University of Florida Gators, which is unusually terrible. 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 Yeah, terrible. I mean, that, that's unprecedented in Gainesville. And then they have, in the ACC championship, they have Duke. The Duke Blue Devils are looking like they're going to the ACC championship. So, it's the Florida State like the easy going so far in the, in the, in the college uh, football ranks in yes. the, on the road to the national championship. Without, without a doubt, Florida State has not had every game they played was pretty much no contest. Without a no no contest at all. But um, led by a quarterback, James Winston, he's on the Heisman runnings, and they they got this man in some in the spotlight as being in some trouble. Yeah, I mean you got James Winston. He's being a lead a lead involved in, in in a rape case but well, this is this is this is what this is what baffles me about this case i mean this case was closed over a year ago by the tpd police the tallahassee police department it was closed over a year ago and then for a description in the police report it was between a 5-8 and a 5-9 suspect James pause Lewis. for a second 
This guy is 6'4", man. 6'4". I mean, so it's just crazy. I mean, before this guy got notoriety, the case was closed. I mean, he's not he's not the superstar that he, at, at the time when, when the case right. was open, he's not a superstar. We're going to let this case, case close because we don't have enough evidence. Now that he's in the national national spotlight, getting a lot of publicity about the Heisman race, now you want to bring about the case again, Tallahassee police? Come on now. That, that's that's, that's, See, that's just, embarrassing. That's, that's one thing I think that college football needs to work on is pretty much People are people, you know, things happen. Not to say I justify or, or take without a doubt. If, you know, if for he did it, which he I did wrong, yeah. but but when you have a player with this type of national like he's national attention and getting that type of recognition, I don't think it's fair that you that you bring things from that past to help interfere with Especially things a coming case that's being closed because, because because not enough not, not enough evidence being brought to the table. The exactly. case is closed. Now yeah. bringing it back up because he's in the national spotlight. A, a, with a good Florida State team on the way to the national championship could be the Heisman winner. A lot of good things in Tallahassee. They want to bring about the, some some crazy. And then if you if you remember back to last year's Heisman running, yeah, Johnny Menzel was putting the spotlight for some negative attention during right, his that. Heisman running. I just think that's not a good tactic because when when Heisman is decided by polls as well as competition and skill level, if you got this type of negative attention going on in the heart of the football season, progressing on to the college to the um, Heisman runners. That's not a good look for James Winston, and I, I just don't think that it's fair that it's hard and as much work as he's put into playing quarterback this season that a small mistake from the past or something that they're trying to resurface could, could possibly throw him off of those ranks. Yeah, see there's Johnny Football who got a lot of scrutiny for going to Miami Heat games, going to Toronto and, and visiting Drake, and then also with the, uh, signing for autographs. But, yeah, to, to piggyback on, on Winston, man, you have a guy that, like you say, Winston who uh, – it's, it's, it, it just really baffles me. Let's let's just move on to to the Heisman contenders. Like I say, with the Heisman contenders, you got you got uh, Johnny Football as we just seen. Man, this guy has thrown for three thousand three hundred yards and thirty one touchdowns. He has eleven interceptions, which is which is not which is not it, it's it, it's kind of it's not on his standards that they have eleven interceptions because he kind of forced things this year. But it's Johnny Football. I mean, he makes a lot of plays with six hundred rushing yards with eight touchdowns. Then you have Jameis Winston. He only has a merely 2,900 passing yards, 28 touchdowns, and seven, and seven interceptions with three rushing touchdowns. But those stats are kind of misleading. Manziel has better numbers, but you got to think about it. Florida State's been blowing out everybody. Exactly. By halftime, I mean, Jameis Winston, he's sitting with a, with a cap on playing hangman on the sideline. So without a doubt, I mean, you, those stats are kind of misleading because he doesn't play the whole game because Florida State has really been dominating the opponent. Those are the two – I mean, it's up to those two. I mean, without a doubt, you have you have uh, Marcus Mariota of Oregon. He kind of fallen off the map since he took that loss, and his numbers has kind of declined a little bit. But without a doubt, the Heisman is up to is going to be is it going to be a repeat for Johnny Manziel, or it's going to be back to back freshmen winning it with Johnny Manziel winning it last year and Jameis Winston winning it this year. Yeah, that'll be big. Yeah, and then so yeah, and you have AJ McCarron. I believe he's just going to go to New York just because you know he's he's on a national championship team. He's won three national championships during his years at at, uh, at Alabama. Starting yeah. quarterback for two of them. That's I mean, one thing I can say about McCann. He's de definitely a winner. And definitely, and, and not to say, it, let's say we excluded Menzel and Winston out of this he conversation. Should, I mean, his numbers are not bad. I mean, he has 21 touchdowns to, 20, to 2,200 passing yards in the SEC against, with, with, a, with a good rushing attack at Alabama. I mean, they're known for running the football. So, I mean, without a doubt, he's a 30, he has a 36-3 and record as a starter, the best in Alabama history. And we're talking about some great quarterbacks with Joe Montana, and, and with names like with names like that, I mean, great great quarterbacks have been playing at uh, University of Alabama and have the most have the most wins in Alabama history from a quarterback is just amazing. Before we um, go on to the NBA topics, one question I got about this Heisman: Do you think that um well I'm sorry about college football and the SEC? Do you think that the SEC is losing its swag or losing its because the, the, the level of competition used to be SEC, ACC, Pac-10? Do you think the SEC is still the, the reigning champ for college football? I mean, it's it's going. We, we, we won't find out that until we get to the national championship. I mean, because these guys are playing against each other and dominating each other. But I mean, these guys have won the past national championship, so I, I still have to give it to to the SEC. But these other conferences are catching up. Yeah. And I mean, like Alabama, I feel like Florida, Florida State had the top five recruiting classes last year, so they're starting to catch up with these other these other schools or whatnot. I feel like the national championship is going to tell a lot. Is the SEC still the dominant force that we know we know it to be? Uh, we'll see. Um, in NBA talk, we got um, the LA Lakers off to a decent start. 
playing surprisingly good basketball, seeing that Kobe Bryant still isn't off the injured list. But um, Kobe's return is anticipated, and last week he actually started practicing. Yeah, without a doubt, he had, he had a full practice with the L.A. Lakers, and I mean, and Pau Gasol and Jody Meeks say he, he looked like the Kobe old. He looked like the Mamba of old, which is great news for the Lakers. They was really excited about that. And then just today we have breaking news that Kobe Bryant has been cleared to pursue basketball activities, so the ball is in Kobe court. Whenever right. he feel like he's ready, he could play, he could play tomorrow if he wanted to. Whenever he feel like he's ready to play, he would be playing. So, I mean, to be physically cleared off, off, the, uh, off the waivers list with injuries or whatnot, with no problems with the Achilles, the doctor see, it's up to Kobe Bryant. He's had a remarkable, remarkable rehab towards, towards his uh, return to the NBA. I mean, with, with Kobe being who he is and what we know about him, Kobe has a lot of pride, and he's not going to step on that court until he feels like he's at, at a level to compete the way that he used to or the way that people remember him playing. But just the way, you know, Derrick Rose, he was ready a long time before. He was ready to actually return. And it but he was, wanted to make 100% sure. But see, the thing about I can't blame Derrick Rose because ACL is a, just like an Achilles. It's is a, is a real hard injury to come back from. But I believe Derrick Rose could have came back a long, a a long lot time. Sooner. Yeah, a lot sooner. Do you think Kobe will stretch his time out? Kobe is nowhere near like Derrick Rose. Kobe's a, Kobe wants it. He wants to win a sixth championship, championship along with seven if he can. But Kobe wants to win that sixth championship to, to tie the great Michael Jordan. I mean, we talk about one of the greatest minds in NBA, NBA basketball I mean, history as far as competitiveness and wanting to be the best and striving to be the best. Without a doubt, Kobe would be back 100% better than what he was. He wants to prove all the critters wrong for ranking him the, tw 25th. the, the 25th best player in the NBA, which is blasphemy. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. So he wants to prove all those ESPN critters wrong with a, hey, I'm still the black mama. I'm still a top five player in this league, even in my 18th year in the league, even at 35 years old, coming off a very, a very terrible injury. Exactly. I think, I think Kobe returned and with the new guys they got on versus LA, the young guys who are stepping up and pretty much taking that role that Kobe will be taking back over. Exactly. I just think it's, it's a good opportunity for them young guys to get in there and, and, and play those games and, and be those big playmakers with Kobe's absence. But, you know, when he comes back, I think reg Lakers will be back to, you know, regularly scheduled. Without career. a doubt. And Lakers are having a lot of trouble closing games out in the fourth quarter. The Lakers yeah. could have a whole a lot better record if they had a go-to player to go to in the fourth quarter. I mean... But hey, guess what? Guess who's coming back? The black mom. Exactly. So I mean, you got a guy who closed the game out there when the fourth quarter, when the fourth, well, I'm sorry, when the, uh, when it's time to close the game out, and he's in the fourth quarter. He's 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 the black mom. He's known to have ice in his veins. He wants the ball in his hands when it's time for pressure. He 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 could call the cause the matchup because nobody can check him one on one. Exactly. Hand two hands in the face, ten hands. It don't matter. It doesn't matter. It's going in with Kobe Bryant fourth quarter. All right. Well, that about wraps up Kobe Bryant segment of the day's show. I think we're ready to roll on to Sports Corner's top five players. No, no, no. We, we got to talk about these freshmen, man. Yeah, we got to talk about Julius Rand Randle, Andrew Wiggins, and Jabari Parker. I mean, these guys, they, they're bringing them so much hype to the game. I'm talking about, like, these guys talking about LeBron James, Carmelo Anthony, Dwayne Wade. That draft class, the 2003 draft class, this is the most hype draft class since then. You have Andrew Wiggins. They say he, he would have been the number one pick out of high school last year. This guy is just that good. I mean, I'm not sure why they why they took the rule away for uh, players having to go from one year to college or well, not. Nah, they, they should have the high school rule because, I mean, one year of college is, is really a waste of time. You're only taking basic basic classes in the first place. But then you have Jabari Parker, who's 6'9", 230 pounds. His game reminds me so much of Carmelo Anthony. Offensively, he, he, he gets to the rack whenever he wants to. He has a shot like Carmelo Anthony. He's, he's, a, he's an offensive assassin just like Carmelo Anthony. As far as the athletic ability, it, it's just like Carmelo. So Carmelo is, isn't the greatest of athletes, but he's just so dominant offensively and strong. Right. He's, too, he's too big for a smaller defender and too quick for a bigger defender. I mean, Jabari Parker, he had 29 points against Andrew Wiggins. He reminds me just of, just of Carmelo Anthony. So, CJ, how many years until you think these guys, these freshmen you were just talking about, will be the LeBron James talks and the Kobe Bryant type talks? Oh, they're, they're going to the NBA after the season, without yeah. a doubt. I mean, they'll probably take a a year or two or not. These guys are bona fide superstars. We haven't seen a play. I mean, Andrew Wiggins is the most hyped player since LeBron James came out. We haven't seen players like these come out since that 2003 draft. We had Chris Bosh, who's been a great player. LeBron James, who's been an exceptional player. Dwayne Carmelo, Dwayne. D. Wade. I mean, this, this draft class is up there with the, with the Michael Jordan draft class when it was Michael Jordan, Charles Barkley, Hakeem Olajuwon, John Stockton. With the Kobe draft class when it was Allen Iverson, Kobe Bryant, Steve Nash, Jermaine O'Neal. Up to the 2003 draft 2003 class, we have, like I said, Dwayne Wade, Carmelo Anthony, LeBron James, and Chris Bosh. 
these three guys, and I didn't talk about Julius Randle. I mean, this guy, he, imagine athletic, and uh, I'm sorry, an athletic Zach Randolph. Exactly. So I mean, this, this guy is Zach Randolph times ten. I mean, this guy, he he has an NBA body already. If you look look at look at his frame, he's built for the NBA. He has a LeBron James, Dwight Howard type frame in college as a freshman, which is crazy. He's only 18 years old. So I mean, this guy has an NBA body already. But the only only knock I have on him is he's so he's left. He's so dominant left in the NBA. They're going to they're going to pick you apart because in college you can dominate these smaller guys just going your left hand every time. But the NBA. It's going to take skill and challenge for him to, to master his right hand as well. Once he gets, gets that down, without a doubt, that Julius Randle, he'll be one of the top players in the country. Exactly. I'm sorry about that. Now we're ready to roll on the, the most interesting segment of the show, Sports Corner's Top, top five, 5 Plays of the Week. At number 5, we got Malcolm Floor with a 92-yard touchdown pass from Carson Palmer, breaking tackles, shaking guys off. This is the Malcolm Floor that these guys wanted when they drafted him to go outside Larry Fitzgerald. I mean... A physical specimen, shaking guys off. You know, sometimes the it takes zone, those man. wide receivers to get takes them a couple seasons to transition. Exactly does. Us, At number four, we have Xavier Henry. Ooh, just throwing it down over his old college teammate. Welcome to Laker Town, son. You just being added to my poster. At number three, we got Brandon Jennings, the alley hoop off the backboard. That's the Brandon Jennings that Detroit wanted when they signed him. Great play, great point guard, like those Motor City jerseys. At number two, we have J.J. Worthing with the, with the big catch, one-handed to give UCF the win over Temple. These guys are going to the BCS. They're going to be a BCS buster. One-handed, diving catch. Yeah, UCF will definitely be a BCS bust for sure. At number one, we have Ricardo Lewis of Auburn with probably the player, player of the year and in, in probably the player, player of Freaking Auburn, Auburn history. Look at this catch. They're down, they're down to Georgia. This is the with 20 seconds left. He falls right in his hand. Tilt drill, right in his hand. The Auburn crazies go crazy. I mean, I don't when, know, see that. When, when you when you're coach, when you when you, when you do the tilt drill in, in football, when you coach the, with the tilt drill, you, you're taught to tip it down. I mean, he took it right in the air. Exactly. But um, I noticed you comment on that last highlight that he might be the face of Auburn football no, no, history. No, 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 that play. Oh, that, that play, play okay. might be going down as one of the best plays. Oh, you got Bo Jackson. Very disrespectful. Yeah, you have Bo Jackson, Jackson and Cam, Cam Newton. Cam Newton. <laughs> Those guys came through. Nick Fairley. Oh, yeah. Those guys like that. Yeah, we thought about uh, the Cadillac, Cadillac Williams and, exactly. and Ronnie Brown. Some good guys came out of Auburn. Great guys. Needless to say. But um, this week we've covered um, the, ES, the football's top, top players. Top teams, you know, like Chiefs and Broncos, a great game last night. Yeah, the Seahawks. We'll see what New England does tonight. They could Against possibly Cam be Superman. eight and two, or they could fall to a seven and three. We'll yep. see how that goes. BCS standings, I don't think those will change up too much. Alabama's pretty solid with their spot. FSU is definitely pretty solid. Ohio State at three. Baylor Ohio at four. State and Baylor just outside looking in. Exactly. Next season they might have a chance to be in those one and two slots. Yeah. But um, Oregon at a five. Uh, the Heisman runnings, we got Menzel. Jameis Winston, McCarron. Yep. Let's see how that goes. Do you have Jameis Winston case? Hopefully that case can resolve and it'll be fine for yeah, the Heisman. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. And then can Kobe Bryant become this old Kobe self, which we all believe he can. Exactly. And Black also Mo. these young freshmen, man, Julius Randle, Andrew Wiggins, and Jabari Parker. Watch out, NBA. They're on the way. And we hope you enjoyed the top five plays of the week. We hope you enjoyed the entire segment. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks for joining us on Sports Corner. Attention. Thank you.